Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And in this episode, I plan to send a mission to the moon. Now, my basis for this mission will be the High Toss 3, as you can see. And I'm going to keep, uh, maintain its ability to return, I think. Well, I don't know. I don't think I'll have enough juice if I try and maintain its ability to return, actually. And the key thing is, of course, the mass of the the heat shield and so maybe I shouldn't on the first try yeah okay so first try I'll do it without the heat shield and so uh, without this extra mass so let's take this off take this off uh, keep that on there let's hold off on that this tank is no longer necessary for a bit and so we'll attach things like this we need this antenna because that's the only one that'll be able to maintain connection at such a long range and it'll be doing that with the satellite in geostationary and we should uh, probably slap on some scientific instruments shouldn't we I mean well wait 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 this probe isn't for the moon is it this is for moonar experiments uh, this one is for it doesn't say um, I think this one was for high, high orbit. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, let's get this one, which uh, says it is uh, up equipped with lunar experiments, and we don't need uh, those either, and we don't need a special battery for this stage because it's not being decoupled. Okay. Um, I have to set all this aside while we pull this one up. Okay. There we go. Alright, uh, now, where's the little stuff I set aside? Let's say... some science. We'll be able to transmit back even if we don't... if we aren't able to retrieve it. I wonder if the Gravioli experiments will be doable at each uh, biome on the moon, so I'm gonna tack on... Uh, that looks ugly, doesn't it? Let's have those at the bottom here. Okay, that looks better. And some thermometers. Let's have two of those. There's probably only two readings for the moon. And maybe on this side. Okay. Now, it seems like we have enough Delta V here. Hmm. But uh, the second stage will have to be relit. Yeah. Uh, right now... We will want to get into orbit and then transfer to the moon. Unless we can do a direct... Uh, I doubt we will be able to do a direct uh, ascent to the moon. Hmm. That would be tricky. So yeah, we do want to get into orbit first. But that's tricky all on its own because... Well, I guess we just shut it down then, huh? Yeah, so we need to be able to relight this engine. And that means I should use the same method I... Uh, I was planning on, which is these solid stretchable SRBs, I think. Uh, I don't think we'll need as many as we did for the launch escape uh, situation, and we should probably use the vacuum ones, because they'll be these will be solely used in the vacuum. So let's put some Ullage uh, rockets here, and I'm going to say... Uh, let's say four. Well, no, let's do two at a time. And let's make them smaller, uh, about the same size as the ones I did before on the launch escape system. So oh, I have to be careful not to shrink the up. Oh, well, I can't actually. That that one doesn't shrink in this direction anyway. So 
So 1.25 and then, uh oh, this will shrink it. Uh, oh, take it off first and then do it, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna give it six units instead of five and uh, reduce the burn time. To one second. Let's say 1.25 since I've got more fuel in now. So this will be just a normal little stage here. Like so. Okay, I think uh, all the best is spoken for here. I don't know if we'll be able to get a good trajectory in relight, but we'll see. Let me just check to make sure we've got the uh, requisite uh, liquid fuel oxidizer. We do. We do have a little bit more than we need, actually. Oh, that looks fine. I don't think... Uh, well, I, I suppose we could make it a little bit bigger. Well, that'll uh, decrease our thrust to weight ratio, though. Maybe this stage. Get back to uh, 8 minutes and 10 seconds. And let's have this be... 255. I'm gonna give it 4 minutes of burn time. Well, close enough. Okay. Well. That looks good enough for a moon transfer easily, with plenty of room to spare. Actually, I don't even think the... If we extended the top stage a little bit, we wouldn't even need the relight on this stage. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll just make this a little bit bigger. go with that for now. Okay, there are a lot of things to think about when it comes to this. For, well, first of all, let me fix the staging here, which is all, all messed up. Okay, uh, we do need to put it into uh, inclined orbit, and we have to time it right. But also the name, I think I'm gonna go with Alice, and uh, that that's a reference if you if you know it, congratulations. Um, but yeah, we're gonna call this one Alice. Gonna save it and make sure. Oh, okay, I guess. Well, uh, the timing is right, and I don't think there's a need to fill it up to the brim. I gotta keep it as is. Yeah, let, let's just keep everything as is. I'm I'm satisfied with this. Let's go out to the launch pad and then I'm gonna have to do some time warping to get into the right position alright okay so here we are with our old dead uh, satellite Uragity the one that didn't have any electric charge so we gotta put it to use by making it our time warping satellite uh, one good thing about it is it is in an equatorial orbit and so what we do is we set the moon as a target and see where the ascending and descending node are. And as you can see, it's sort of like that. And it's really... should be more like this. Okay, I get the look of it right. It's close enough. Uh, looks like we're uh, too far here. Alice ready to launch. And so... Well, I'll just get to this... Oh, well, maybe... Uh, let's see, this... Oh, great, they're both on, like, the Terminator. They're both uh, right at the edge between night and day. But it looks like this one will be more in the dark than this one. So... I'm gonna launch here. Well, this one will be going into the light, though. So it'll be dark on the launch pad, but uh, we'll be getting dawn. Alright, I think I'll launch from the, from the ascending node, just so that we can uh, get some light on the long way up. I mean, it's a long trip up after all. 
Yeah, I like this. All right. So this is the ascending node. Does that mean we go negative? Let's see, I, I think it means we go uh, 135. I mean, 23.5 plus 90, 113.5? 113.5. Yep, okay. I think that's the plan. Alright, so uh, let's go back to the launch pad. Can I click on it from here? So as expected, we're a little bit in the dark right now, but you've seen this particular rocket launch a few times. Uh, so it's, it's, not, uh, it's not full of drama. The real drama is when we make our moon transit. So SAS is on, Thrall is up. Everything looks good. And without further ado, off we go. Now obviously one thing I want to do right away is just target the moon. There's no point not doing that. It's the moon as a target. I don't know, which MechJeb functions do I have here? I don't think any of this is really relevant, is it? I mean, we've got all the info in our info window already. No need for that. Okay, so I said we need to go 113, I think it was. I hope I'm right about that. It's been a little while since I've done a uh, moon transfer like this. Uh, since my Apollo, uh, no, no, my uh, the N1 special, right? Uh, sorry, it's in the dark, of course. Let me try and get it to the Milky Way. We've got Dawn sort of poking up out there, so hopefully that'll bring us some light soon. I'll need it because I need to be able to uh, extend the antennae and do all that sort of thing. Gotta remember that these aren't the uh, normal procedural fairings up there, those are actually the side fairings and so if I try and decouple them like this, uh, the whole thing will fall apart and I'll lose the second stage, so can't do that uh, until the second stage is, is expended. So I'm gonna have to remove the side fairings individually in order to get to the components inside. So I think this is the first time we got to attempt a relight of the second stage. I've always sort of threatened... Well, no, it's not true. We did do a relight of the second stage, but this is the first time we got to do a relight of the second stage substantially after uh, we shut it down. In other words, when the fuel flow is unstable. So, uh, yeah, this is the first time we'll have to uh, get the fuel flow back up and running before we relight the second stage. And so, yeah, this is really the first time we're... Uh, significantly dealing with all the stuff that uh, engine ignition throws at us and that'll be important for all the moon missions we're probably gonna have to relight stages I've sort of always been threatening to have this happen I always carried enough uh, igniter in order to relight the stage but I never actually used it Probably better to keep the apoapsis as low as possible to uh, manage the lunar transit. But I also need the time to uh, burn the second stage.
Okay. Okay, first stage separation is good, and we are on our way. Uh, I'm gonna press one in the hope that the top antenna does poke out. I didn't uh, replace it with a new one. I had it set off to the side specifically so that I could extend it with the hotkey, but I didn't really check that I still had it hotkeyed. And we're still in the dark, so it's tough to look. But let me try and get one of the side fairings off. Alright. Um... see now okay yeah the top antenna is extended that's good that'll be fine as long as we're in orbit around uh, earth or slash Kerbin uh, that's all we really need it's only with the after we do our lunar transit that we need the larger antenna in order to maintain communication Come to think of it, these, these these fairings need to go up here, not down there. We'll still have the second stage while we're... Uh, we have to relight the second stage first, then dump the second stage. And this will dump the second stage, so... Might as well have all this go at the same time as this. Okay, so seven minutes burn time, two minutes to apoapsis, so we do need to sort of make sure that we limit how quickly we're getting to apoapsis here. Maybe a little bit more tilt up here. How's our uh, relative inclination? Uh, three degrees and dropping, that's good. got a long way to go this is this probe is going much much farther than any other probe we have sent as you can see so it's no guarantee it's gonna get there but we should have the Delta V for it Obviously, this is not going to be returned to the surface of uh, Earth slash Kerbin. We don't have the heat shield, and we really couldn't have put the heat shield. We wouldn't have had enough. No, I mean, uh, I really need to check that. It was it would have been tight on the delta V there. This is not tight on the delta V. This this has plenty of margin to get to the moon. Now let's quickly see if I can just uh, continuously burn... No, there's no way. If I try and continuously burn, what's going to happen is this end is going to poke out. And so we're in totally the wrong place for that. Uh, we probably should have burned on the other side. If we wanted to do a continuous burn, I actually should have started burning. I should have done it through the descending node, actually. Well, that's fine. Uh, I want to try the restart thing anyway. Okay, here we go. Let me do my usual and just try and get it into 300 by 300. Ooh, well that's closer than I've uh, ever gotten it, I think. We still got 1600 meters per second on this stage, so might as well use it. Um, very good, very good. Okay, um, we don't need to extend the, ant the other antenna, so we're we're good to go at this point. Uh, yep. So let's plot for the moon. Oh, too close, too close. I'm blatantly assuming that my satellite network will be good and give us complete coverage here, so I'm not even talking about that.
Darn it, it looks like our burn for the moon will also be on the dark side. This was bad planning in terms of lighting on my part. Now, the reason you might be wondering, why am I even bothering to try and look at the return? And the reason is I want to simulate the return. Uh, there's no reason not to simulate the return. And so when we do a future mission with the the next ver uh, the next uh, generation of probe, why wouldn't I want? Well, you know what? Uh, let's let's uh, plan for a burn around the moon to do that. So let's get close to the moon, and let's not have a immediate trajectory for that, and just focus on getting to the moon as close as possible first. Seems I can't get too much closer than a thousand eight hundred kilometers from here. We can do a mid-course burn in order to correct that. And at that point we'll be on the amines and nitric acid so that those the, the relight situation shouldn't be a problem. Okay. So I think I'll do it that way. And then we'll plot for return once we uh, get over there. Or we can plot for orbit. Maybe we can leave this in uh, lunar orbit. That might be a good thing. Okay. So 53 minutes. And at that point we'll have to see if we can relight this thing. Let's see. Uh, fuel flow is very unstable as you can see from behind there. Yes. So we've got that problem. Okay, uh, it's going to be a long burn, so I really should. So let's take a look at fuel flow again. Alright, and now I'm going to light... Uh, hmm, light... Right. Okay, now it's stable. Oh shoot, we're pointing in the totally wrong direction. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <sighs> silly, 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 silly. Okay, good, good. And it really doesn't matter on the throttle, it only has one setting. Good thing we have a lot of margin. That was really stupid. Not pointing in the right direction. Okay, we might as well burn the other solid boosters, so here we go. Alright, and then... Off goes the probe. And now that we have the probe underway, let me try and find my antenna. Yes. And this will be targeting GSTAT. And I'm going to activate it. And once we're finished with this burn, I'm going to head on over to GSTAT to make sure that uh, it knows that it needs to communicate with this little guy. But for now, I think our communication situation is just fine. Maintaining attitude control right now is a little bit difficult because, of course, we're on the reaction wheel, which is very, very underpowered. This reaction wheel only has, I think, 0.25 torque in either direction. And uh, the rocket does not gimbal. Okay, let's throw this guy down a bit and see how we're approaching the moon. Things are always a little bit different due to the burn time. Okay. Used a few relights there actually. How many relights do we have on this thing? It's not infinite. Where? Okay. <laughs> the dark is really annoying me now. Here we go. Come on. Mm, Corporal sustainer. Oh, I guess this one isn't really configured for that. It's got the real fuels, but not the relights. Okay. All right. So let's get rid of our maneuver node. And let's see now. The ascending node will be the right point to no. 
not that. Would be the right point to do a little bit of a maneuver here. So, if it's the ascending node, let's go down. Okay, 47 kilometers. Yep. This time, let me actually turn to my maneuver node. Oh, it's, a, it's an inclination node, so let me go in this direction. Yeah, there we go. All right. Back out. Mm, I guess we shouldn't go. Whoa, is that the moon there? I think that's the moon. Uh, let, let's time warp a little bit. 28 minutes. Should take it from out here so that I can... Oh, uh, you know what? Let me uh, connect it up. Oh, I'll lose the maneuver node if I do that. And it's a good maneuver because it gets us within 50 kilometers of the moon. So let me actually do this burn first. And then I'll make sure we've got a connection to GSTAT. We're still within... Yeah, as long as we're within this one's... Uh, no, this is GSTAT. Uh, we, we are getting a little bit high here. Okay, gonna do it here. Yep. Hundred and forty three. Can we bring that down a little bit? Okay, that's good enough. All right, so let me quickly uh, jump to G stat one. Okay, here we are, and this one's to mission control. This is to unknown target, which means it was a previous mission, and I want it to connect to Alice. All right, so that little well, let's make sure everything is kosher up here. Yep, everything's good. So without uh, any other delays, let us go back to our outbound mission. One thing we do need to do with. Uh, Alice is to make sure that it's rotated so that its solar panels are really getting sunlight here. So let's first do this axis and then whoa, whoa, whoa come on. Nope, the other way. Go like that. Let's see, does this look like it's getting not enough yet? Okay. Yeah, that's better. Uh, perhaps still a little bit more. Yep, that looks good. And there's the moon, isn't it? Alright. We've got a long way to go. Quite a journey. keep an eye on things and without further ado it's time warp and let, let's see it go and I'm gonna have to cut out uh, the transition between the two spheres of influence because that is a recipe for crashes so Oh, hold on a sec. I noticed my electric charge is going down. Maybe it's SAS. Or maybe it's just all these antennae. I don't need this one anymore. We're too far out. Let me just make sure. We're way too far out to be connecting through anything but GSTAT. So uh, let me first of all deactivate this antenna. No, no. 
and also deactivate SAS. Hopefully that'll be good enough. Point oh eight charge per second, and these show an energy flow of point oh two. Well, anyway, we're gonna get there. It's just uh, in what condition? Oh, now we're at uh, twenty nine kilometers. That's unexpected. All right, uh, let's continue. Electric charge situation is not good. What? I mean, obviously, I can't uh, tell this antenna to shut off. What else could be draining uh, electric charge? Can I? I mean, right now they shouldn't be uh, drawing any any charge. Guess I'll toggle torque. It's well. Let, 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 let's just disable it for now. I don't think it. That's what's really drawing anything. It must be just the antenna. In that case, I would have thought that we had enough charge here between these six panels. But maybe I'm miscalculating that somehow. Uh, we're still 18 hours out and I don't know if our electric charge will hold enough for me to do anything in the moon sphere of influence. Let's see. Okay, well we barely have enough uh, electric charge left. Let's do some stuff while we can. I don't know if I can transmit it though. That's uh, quite a energy drain. Let's see, log temperature can't be done right now. Uh, gravioli. Okay, we can do this, and we can transmit. Oh, and it's uh, ooh, it's it's dependent on the biomes. Very, very good. Okay, sixty-six signs. Uh, I don't know how much of that will drain our. Well, let's just send it over. All oh, right. Uh, for some reason, the electric charge doesn't get drained at this point. Well, I don't know why, but I guess that's good. All right, so we got that 66. Excellent. Um, uh, we don't really know if we're going to be passing over other biomes, so I better not try and be funny. Uh, keep uh, electric charge for that. Well, it doesn't even draw it, so it's fine. Let's activate the data recorder. And hopefully it's not going to draw too much. Well, it draws a lot of electric charge. Uh, it looks like we do both uh, low, high, and on land readings with this one. Okay, so we've got a lot of uh, potential here. We're probably in high, so... How much do we need? 150, okay. No point getting the samples since uh, we can't bring them back. High orbit readings? 250, okay! Yes, let's transmit that. Yes, transmit the data. And let's uh, deactivate the data recorder for now. We are we will be getting in low, obviously, and we could potentially transmit data from there if we have the electric charge remaining. But this is tremendous. 250 signs. Well, that's a lot of much. I, uh, of course, uh, didn't have a clear idea about how much we would be getting from the graviolis, uh, especially the gravioli because it's biome dependent and there's so many biomes on the moon, uh, but also uh, the actual main experiment. Let's see now. Does the gravioli think that we are over a different biome? Well, no. Okay, let's get closer in. Let's see. 18 hours. There's no way uh, we're going to be getting low over the moon at this rate. But maybe we'll get a different biome. Do the... Do the engines provide electric charge? I don't think so. No, otherwise they'd have some sort of electric charge meter. Okay. 
No, we're still on Midlands. Darn. Well, I guess we could try it out. Let's let's say we were to plot. It never likes me to plot these things. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Can we get a return trip somehow? This is probably not the right way to do it. No. We're in a very awkward place in our in our orbit, so tough to figure out if there's any possibility of anything over here. I just don't want to leave the space junk, honestly. So what I'm trying to do right now is just remove this as potential space junk, and of course, seeing if the rocket can recharge, but I doubt that. Okay, that'll be a quote-unquote return tra trajectory right there, yes. Okay, uh, and that's doable. Uh, that'll lead us to crash into Kerbin, but we weren't planning on retrieving this anyway. There's no heat shield. Alright, so first things first, let me reactivate the reaction wheel. Turn to maneuver. And 10 minutes, let's see. Should hold out for that long. Okay. Mm, a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, let's try and get this like that. All right. There is some time delay, even though it doesn't show it. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, yeah, there is some time delay between me issuing a command and it responding. So even though it's not showing it like that, I think I still got the remote tech delay. Either that, I've got like tremendous lag. We're clearly not recharging the batteries, so that's going to be a problem. And I don't know if I've done this maneuver well enough to get us into our intended location. It's wobbling all over the place. Uh, this is not just me. Okay, let's see how we're doing here. doesn't look like we have a uh, periapsis. That's all I want. I just want to uh, make sure we're crashing into Kerbin. Very simple. It looks like it's okay. Uh, obviously we don't have our Kerbin periapsis here. It's the Mooner periapsis, so I can't see like that. Alright, we're gonna assume that this is going to mean its demise. We've got a little bit of electric charge left, so why don't I uh, oh, the reason why it was unstable is because I didn't have SAS on it. I turned it off. Still over the Midlands. Well, it's a lot of Midlands, isn't there? Let's get uh, to where we have the last ounce of electric charge here. And see if we're over something else. Nope. Okay, well, I'm not going to check anymore. Let's... Let's see it fly by the moon, and then meet its demise. Oh. Yeah, no, it's 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 not got anymore. Okay, no more connection. Oh, uh, because of our uh, new burn, we're probably gonna 
pass high. Oh, I should have just crashed into the moon. Well, no, I don't want to lose, leave space junk in the moon. At least if we send it to Kerbin, it'll burn up in the atmosphere. But yeah, because we did that burn, uh, we're not flying high over the moon instead of uh, low over it. So it didn't get quite as close to the moon as I would have liked, but but uh, Alice did make it to the moon. It is in the moon or sphere of influence. And now let's get it back home. Okay. Oh! You know, for some reason it, uh, it... Did I just not... Was I not angling my... Well, this is, doesn't even look like it's angled towards the sun properly anyway. I'm gonna have to re-examine how I point these things at the sun, because now it's gained electric charge. It's losing it again, but it did gain it for a bit. I'm wondering where it gained that electric charge. Uh, somewhere along the trip it was able to recharge. So I guess I was not angled at the sun properly. Uh, anyway, it's probably better to just pack more batteries instead of uh, getting the electric charge margin so low. I wonder if uh, there's any chance to do more gravioli here. Not carbon water, we've done it before. Okay, let's just uh, continue to watch it meet its demise. Yeah, let's do it from out here. And this is the bright view. Though we can't really see Kerbin in this shot. But we're gonna see it soon. Oh, it has to be in the dark. Oh well. So coming in at 11,000 meters per second. And there it goes. That's the end of that. But a successful mission. We transmitted plenty of data. And uh, yeah, let's go back to the go back to the research center and see how much we've got. All right, so we've got 386 signs here, and uh, at, while editing the previous episode, I noted that it says here, new advances in construction make it possible to build larger than ever before. So I'm thinking maybe engineering might help me to build bigger fuel tanks, even though nothing in here has anything to do with fuel tanks. So let me just research that and see if that theory works out. Uh, is there any other thing that has a size limitation? No, uh, these these were the only ones that had a size limitation. All right, so just let's quickly pop into VAB and see if that's the case. So I'm just going to grab a stretchy tank. Let's try this stretchable conic tank and no such luck. I sort of expected that and super stretchable tank can only super stretchable to 0.625 still. All right, uh, that that's fine. We'll we'll continue to use these tanks uh, up to 3.75 for now, and wait till we get more advanced tanks. Hopefully, there are more advanced tanks up ahead somewhere. But uh, for now, this will do. As uh, so we've only been using two meter tanks after all, so I think we've got plenty of room to spare, especially since now we've been able to do a mission to the moon. And we will do plenty more missions to Moon in the future. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.